Richard, you're a member of the Trust Advisory Panel and also heavily involved in the political world. What do you think the public want to see from the politicians with regard to railway stations and their heritage? Politics and politicians have been linked inextricably with the railways from the very earliest days. The whole of the British railway system uh, came about because of laws passed by Parliament, mostly in the Victorian time. And the politicians of that age understood the significance of the railway and the role that it was going to play in the life of our country. Um, as early as 1848, Benjamin Disraeli was able to write in his novel Sybil that the railways will do as much for mankind as the monasteries did. So there was there has been an appreciation of the role of the railways. And um, to go with that appreciation came a very strong acceptance that the buildings which were part of the railway system had to be of iconic and best possible standard. So we have wonderful Victorian railway stations and buildings, which happily have very largely survived. And with and through the work of the Railway Heritage Trust, have not have not just survived, but have been improved and are back in a, in a way uh, that would seem unimaginable 25 years ago. Because the change in the public attitude towards the railway and in its popularity as a mode of transport has been transformed in the last quarter century. Something I never imagined would be possible when I was working for the Railways Board back in the 1970s and the 1980s. So what, what do you think has brought that change and how has the Trust contributed to it? Well, the Trust plays a very important part in ensuring that the, the stations and other buildings of the railway uh, are brought up to the best standards and people can enjoy and love them as much as our forebears did. Uh, and that is very much part of the offer of the modern railway, that you expect to travel from decent stations with beautiful, beautiful architecture of the sort that we see in so many places around the country. You only have to go to uh, the ancient stations like Newcastle or York, um, or modern ones like Manchester Piccadilly or, or, or King's Cross to realise what is possible, it, what it is possible for today's railway builders to produce. And uh, I, think, I think today's designers of stations and people are responsible for maintaining them, like the Railway Heritage Trust, um, their work would be recognised by people such as Brunel uh, and, the other, and, the other, and the other great railway kings of the, of the, of the 19th century. And how do we ensure that things like the Euston Arch being demolished rather than being moved don't happen again? Well, the demolition of the Euston Arch was a cathartic moment and it was, I think, the final wake-up call um, to those who cared about our, our, our heritage, that nothing like that should ever happen again. I mean, that led to the creation of new societies and, and a determination that the buildings like that would not be lost. And indeed, uh, John Betjeman, of course, who uh, was one of those who was most opposed to the new Euston Arch's demolition, then worked tirelessly to ensure that the same fate didn't um, befall St Pancras. And the fact we have a modern St Pancras doing such a wonderful job in so many different ways is a great tribute to him and indeed to everybody else who realises that stations like St Pancras, brought up to date, can, can play a, a real part in the modern railway. And again, in that, the Railway Heritage Trust has played a very important part. When I was working for the Railways Board back in the 70s and 80s, the mood was one of decline and contraction, and the morale everywhere was very, very low. And one of the consequences of that was that there was no money to spend on our railway stations. So some of the worst pieces of dereliction started to occur during that time. And I remember very well that um, a classic example of a station which had a role to play but had been let go was Wakefield Kirgit. And uh, I remember in the last parliament when Lord Adonis was Secretary of State, um, he did a tour of stations and he decided that he, he, he described Wakefield Kirgit as the worst station in the country. Well, now, with the help of the very substantial funding from the Railway Heritage Trust, which in fact came forward first with an offer of funding, that station is now being restored to a very, very high standard and is an example of what can be achieved. 
Thank you, Richard. And of course, we've just left St Pancras and we're now on our way to Nottingham and we'll see there some of the recent modernisation work that's been done with trust funding on Nottingham Station. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. I haven't been to Nottingham Station for some years, so this is going to be a real treat today. I'm here in Nottingham's magnificent restored railway station, built by the Midland Railway in the early years of the 20th century to rival the uh, fantastic station that was built in the city by the Great Central Railway. It's been the subject of a very major program of refurbishment and rebuilding in, in recent times, and I'm joined by Councillor Jane Urquhart, the Cabinet Member for Planning and Transportation on the City Council. And I'd like to ask Jane how important the station is to the city and to the contribution the Council's made to its restoration. This station is so important for our city. It's wonderful now that it's been restored to have such a great gateway to our city. I think one of the things about Nottingham is that we have tried to combine traditional things about our city with modern things. Our building our new tramway is a very modern thing, but we still have a lot of old fashioned tradition and this station really embodies that so well with the heritage elements and the links through to the modern new tramway. And you've had a lot of help from the Railway Heritage Trust in this project, haven't you? Absolutely. The, the heritage elements of the station are so important. It's what gives it its real character and its real life and uniqueness. So I think the heritage elements have been really important and making sure that that heritage was properly restored during the refurbishment was absolutely crucial to the success that we see that we're standing in today. I was particularly struck by this archway mm. behind us here, yes. which has been opened up and provides a new access to the to the tramway, isn't that right? It, it absolutely does. So this is the physical link from the old to the new because this, this archway is actually newly constructed to link with the old archways of this whole Port Cochere and it links beautifully to a very modern new tram stop. So I think that really shows that old and new coming together and working together really well. Nottingham's been working hard on public transport for a lot of years now really concentrating on making public transport a great offer for the city and I think the station redevelopment really embodies that very well. We've got a modern new tram network, a beautiful restored station with connecting trains to all kinds of destinations and buses as well. So we've got a public transport hub for our city that we can be really proud of. And it isn't just modern transport is it? Because from the tram stop behind us we can go down or we will be able to go down to the northern end of the Great Central Preserved Heritage Railway too, won't you? We will. The, one of the tram lines ends in a, in a great big park and ride very near to Ruddington and so another link between the old and the new. It's a very exciting city, Nottingham. I'm in the original refreshment room of Nottingham Midland Station on platforms five and six. When I last came here, this is a pretty depressing place. It's undergone a bit of a transformation, hasn't it, Jane? It's really been transformed. It's always been the place you come to have a cuppa while you wait for your train. But now it's a place you'd really want to come and have a cuppa while you wait for your train because it's beautiful, quite frankly. And what's been done to make a different, uh, Andy? Well, we knew the place was special. We had the mouldings, the fireplace, and we could see that we had a very nice room. But what's been really great here is getting up into the ceiling and finding that hidden up there was a fantastic plaster frieze that we can see and some stained glass. Didn't this, didn't this originally have a, a false ceiling but you couldn't see any of that? We're not sure whether it was a false ceiling or whether it was boarded up but you couldn't see it and it was a complete surprise to us when we found the cherubs and the trust was delighted to be able to put some of its funding towards restoring the frieze and exposing the stained glass and making the room much lighter and showing its heritage to great advantage. Yes, it's lovely now, isn't it? It is. As you said, it used to be very scruffy. I, I used to come to school and buy a cup of tea here on my way home from school 50 years ago, so it's fantastic for me to see it in this finished state. And Jane, it's an important part of the heritage of Nottingham? Real important part of our heritage, really important part of the station, because you always want to have a a refreshment room that's a nice place where people can come and really enjoy that bit before they get on the train or when they've made a long journey and it's great to have such a lovely environment to do it in.